Hi everybody, Dan Moran here from Concierge Diamonds. People always ask me, what are some over the top stories you've had in your career in the diamond business? And I got a million of them. Here's one you might find interesting. A bunch of years ago, a couple came in to see me looking for an engagement ring. Let's call them Mike and Stephanie. Not their names, but that's what we'll call them. Mike's a nice guy. I knew him from, we had friends in common, and I hadn't met Stephanie before, but she seemed nice. And Mike's got about a $25,000 budget, a lot of money. But whatever I show them that's in their budget, Stephanie is unhappy. Nothing's good enough for Stephanie. She wants more, 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 more. And she's pushing him and she's poking him and she's prodding him with threats, with thinly veiled sexual promises, with innuendo, with whatever it takes, because she wants more. Finally, he capitulates and he winds up uh, buying about a $40,000 ring. And poor Mike is sweating bullets. I'm looking at him and I can tell this is a financial hardship. But he's trying to make his girlfriend happy. And at the end of the day, I'm sitting here going, you know what? I'm his jeweler, not his father. It's none of my business if he wants to spend this money. I asked him if he was sure. He said he was sure. So, okay, we made his ring. He proposes and everything seems happy. About two or three weeks after his proposal, Stephanie comes to see me in the office. Mike's not there, just Stephanie. And she comes in and she says, hey Dan, you know, thanks for making the ring, blah, blah, blah. I'd like you to do something for me. And I said, okay, Stephanie, what's that? And she says, I'd like you to take the stone out of this ring and replace it with a cubic zirconia, you know, a cheap fake diamond. And I said, why, what's going on? Are you guys traveling or something and you don't want to take your ring? She says, no, I just, it's my preference to not wear around the expensive stone every day. I want to, I want to change out for the fake one. Okay. I take the ring and she, she leaves and I tell her I'll take care of it. And as soon as the door closes, I'm calling Mike. Because at the end of the day, Mike's the one who wrote me a check, not Stephanie. Mike's my client. So I called Mike and I said, you know, hey, how's it going, this and that. You know, Stephanie came to see me and this is what she asked me to do. Are you aware of it? He says, no, I'm not aware of it at all. Come to find out, Stephanie was planning to break off the engagement and return the ring, but keep the $40,000 stone and not tell Mike. Thankfully, because Mike found out about it before it happened, he was able to call things off on his terms. I was able to give him back his ring and we, we figured it out. I found another client for the stone and made him whole and it worked out okay for him. I never saw Stephanie again after that day, but about 18 months later, two years later maybe, Mike came in with somebody else who I liked much better. They're still married today with three kids. Mike remains a good friend. And by the time he came back, his business had taken off and he bought a much more expensive ring and it was no longer a hardship. Just goes to show you, you take care of people, you know who your friends are, you do the right thing, it comes back to you. I hope you guys found that interesting. I'll talk to you soon.